Revelation chapter 2, from verses 8 through 11. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things says the first and the last, who is dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Tribulation in this instance are all kinds of oppressions and suffering for the truth, and poverty in this case is poverty of the spirit which in fact is viewed as imperishable riches because he said, but you are rich. The harm or the hurt from the second death consists in the power of death in the face of the reigning sin that lives in our body, which implies eternal destruction. And the victory over the second death in our body implies the destruction of the power of death in our body and the erection of the power of life in its place. But before the power of death is destroyed in our body and in its place the power of life will be erected, the devil will be given power to throw us into prison in order to test us, and we will have tribulation for ten days. The reason why devil is given the right to test us for ten days is that we are under the guard of the law of Moses because of the sin living in our body in the face of the old man, who is the programmable device of sin and the producer of sin. And we inherited this programmable device by the fact of our birth, passed on to us from the vain life of our fathers. The fact is that grace is given to a new man, to a new person, who in our mortal body is represented by our spirit that is reborn from God. Thus, our mortal soul and our perishable body remain under the guard of the law of Moses because the law was given not for the righteous, but for sinners. Thus, due to this sin that lives in us, we are related to this law, and the devil has the right to imprison in the prison of sorrows all those who are under the law of condemnation, because at this time we are found under the law of condemnation. But before, th but, but before faith came, we were kept under the guard by the law, kept for the faith which would afterward be revealed, Galatians 3.23. The crown, we can inherit the crown of the grace of Christ only after, by the body of Christ, we die with the law to the law in order to live for the resurrection of Christ in order to gain access to the grace of God. If a person, in these symbolic ten days, ten is, it symbolizes the law, it's not a literal ten days, it's the law. It is until he is found under the guard of the law, until his sinful nature is not abolished in his body. Then at this time, we being under the guard of the law, we be then begin to consider ourselves dead to sin, but alive to God, calling the non-existent power of resurrection in our body as an existing one. And we are then freed from the guard of the law and gain access to the grace of God. Through such faithfulness to God, man is promised the crown of life, which is a royal crown on his head, representing the seal of God on our foreheads, in the dignity of our spiritual thoughts, which, with the royal power of life, absorb the power of death and everything that death produces. Only in the process of spiritual thoughts can a person seek God in the fulfillment of his will, which gives God a basis to fulfill the hunger of a person seeking his will and all the good of his promises. The young lions, young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Those that overcome or seek the Lord are those whose good need is comprised of searching for the face of the Lord.
Any need that arises, they transform it into searching for the countenance in the face of God. Because in fact, the Word of God is their food, treasure, wisdom, and their inheritance. And if they possessed all the good things of the earth, but for some reason would have been deprived of the opportunity to see God in all the goodness of His Word and to have communion with Him, then none of the earthly goods could fulfill their needs. They would mean none, nothing to them. And they would view such a state as an irreparable loss and as harm from a second death. In order to put on the royal crown of life in our spiritual thoughts and to overcome in our body both the second death and the consequence that comes from the second death, it is necessary, when sorrow and poverty befall us, not to grumble, but to remain a faithful fulfiller of the commandments of God. It is the fulfillment of the commandments of God based on which the commandment of tithes and offerings is established that builds the right relationship between God and man and gives God the right to protect us and bless us. If in the fulfillment of all the commandments of God there is no foundation under this building, commandments are the, are the building, the legislation that must be on some kind of foundation, and if there is no foundation in the subject of the commandments of tithes and offerings that regulate the relationship between God and His people, we build our structure on the sand of our love for money. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in the greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And therefore, as we always say, if the root of all evil is love for money, or the love of money, then the root of all good will be power over silver or money, which we can exercise only in one case. Through tithes and offerings to God in accordance with the words that are in Scripture. So, to offer voluntarily, to offer with joy, and upon offering, we understand that this is true worship, that without the offering of tithes and offerings, our worship ceases to be worship. That in this worship, we express our love toward God, our obedience to His will, and we acknowledge His authority over us. Let us stand, and we are going to serve God tithes and offerings. This is our hour when we can cut the root of all evil, which is love for money, and we can present God the opportunity to act in us and through us. I have heard of the land. The Word of God tells me of it. And somehow, our tides are transformed into the heavenly bank and when we live on the new heaven and earth it is these treasures that are going to be our status in the new heaven and new earth and therefore let us sing of the song I have heard of the land the word of God tells me of it is the name of it
And so each time when Israel had honored God, the tithes and offerings, either in the tabernacle of Moses or the temple of Solomon, they were called to, according to the words of Moses, which he had received from God as a revelation, to proclaim one unique proclamation and to raise their hands over their offerings before the Lord. We, being that same Israel, tied to that same root, drinking from the same olive tree, will do the same thing. Please raise your right hand, a symbol of your right just act over your offerings and pray along with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I have separated the tithes from my home and brought them into your home so that your home may have food. I do not give in sorrow. I do not give impure, impurely and I do not give for the dead. I rejoice that I have the privilege to express my love and to acknowledge your authority. And according to your word, I ask you, right now, may your heavenly windows be opened and may your blessing come down abundantly upon your redeemed nation. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you. You may be seated. <laughs> 